afternoon everybody, this is Nel Carroco again and let's continue now the top 10 mistakes that a lighting designers do using Dialux Evo or actually in any software. Okay, so for this one, this is now the part 2 of the series of the top 10 stupid mistakes that a lighting designers do. I think I need to change this one now because even if you are using AGI32 or Relax or any other software, you will still use the same common mistakes that even if it's in a different software not just the last evil okay so let's continue now if you haven't uh, watched my previous um video about the top one and two okay go and check this one all right so now let's proceed to the another top 10 which is the number three and the number four okay so what are those uh, another top 10 mistakes that a lighting designers do using any other software. Okay, so the first one is not considering the ceiling grid like this one. And the other one is not considering the furnitures and the fixtures. Okay, so let me just explain it. Okay, so for example, this project, this is an office project and there are lots of rooms here, offices. So what I did is I set, uh, let me just delete this one. I set all my rooms into a different functions like say for example office and then I put the edit and then I select the office and then I yeah select the office there so it's now set up so once I put my luminaire the 60 by 60 I can just choose my automatic arrangement click this one and then boom now it is arranged properly so this is suggested by the Dialux Evo software the arrangement so when you calculate this one so let's go and check this one okay so this is the open plan office number nine Okay, there you go. Let's open the CAD file and look at this one. If we calculate this one in a fast mode and then press calculate, yes, we will have our answer, which is five eight, uh, 585 blocks, but the uniformity is not good because of this corner here. But if we want to op offset this uh, calculation surface into 0.5 from the wall, then I'm sure we will get a good overall uniformity. So let's just offset it 0.5 because this is okay if you offset it. And then, yeah, now it's good. Still not good because it's only 0.57. But, um, but we achieve our lux value. Okay, this is supposed to be surface uh, recess mounted. Let's go and make it recess. So we will get our... Uh, overall uniformity better let's see okay so let's just make it a recess like this and then calculate again okay so it's much better now it's 0.58 still it's not because the requirement is 0.6 and that is because of this area in the corner so this is fine let's imagine that we already achieved the 0.6 over overall uniformity and this one is now a green color so the first problem or the uh, the third common mistake that a lighting designer do when they are doing the lighting calculation is not considering the um, ceiling grid. So I will open now the ceiling grid for this one and boom, look at this one. Because uh, in actual, you need to place those fittings or luminaires, luminaires on the ceiling grid because um, the installer will fit it into the framing not like this one the, the the installer will follow the framing grid not you following your layout okay so once you once you followed it of course the lighting value or the lux value and overall uniformity will change so how are you going to do that i will solve this one for now but this is the common mistake and uh of course as a lighting designer we need to always consider these things because um, the actuality or the actual installation will really sh sh uh, show you, show the big significance or the, the difference of your calculation to the actual layout because, of course, you did not follow the grid. Okay, so I'm adjusting it now. 
and uh, so everything is there it's fit now to the ceiling grid and let's see how it looks in the calculation results okay so now it suffers more because the overall uniformity becomes 0.51 so how are you going to defend this one now to your client because of course um you cannot say um we need to adjust the grid based on my spacing because in actuality your luminaries will follow on the ceiling layout not they are the one who will follow you <laughs> okay so yes and uh, to do that say for example it's only 0.51 you can only adjust it because it's already 600 lux and the the office requires only 500 lux so you can adjust, you can just tell to your uh, client or to the consultant that because you follow the ceiling grid that's why the overall uniformity uh, suffers a little but you can show it to them your false color say go to the calculation object click that one and then show the false color value and you will say that it's this in this corner is the only problem because it's a little dark and if you go to that uh, color false color legend it says it's 300 lux so it's still fine so no problem so they should not be too strict because there's a limitation in the, the ceiling grid. Okay, so this is one of the common mistake and I hope that you will follow it. You need to ask for the RCP or reflected ceiling plan every time you do an office lighting, especially office because they are putting a ceiling like a ceiling grid. So for example, this one, I run a calculation just placed using the magic one and now it's not fitting to the grid. So I need to adjust it again. And of course, if I adjust it, it uh, the overall uniformity or um, the lux value will suffer a little. Okay, so as long as you achieve your lux value, that is all fine. If the overall uniformity is not achieving because of some corners or a regular shape of the office, that is also fine. Just make sure on the top of the table, which is the next one we're going to discuss, is uh, achieving 500 lux. Okay, so speaking of the table, now let's proceed to the next or the number four common mistake that a lighting designer do is by not considering the fixtures or the furnitures okay so because in actual uh, we cannot easily identify where the furnitures will be placed in actuality but because the architect already placed where it's going to be so at least you follow those furniture and fixture layout okay so what what does it mean uh, what do you mean by that okay say for example this is a toilet this is a toilet okay so you can see i placed three uh down lights here to achieve a 200 lux on the to toilet and you can see this down light is in the middle of the partition that is sometimes okay especially if the partition is only one point meters height that is fine because it's also distribu distributing the two or you can place the two down lights in, in every cubicle that is also okay but uh, for a toilet lighting design if it's just a regular partition like this one this layout is okay there's a down light in between as long as again of course you follow the ceiling grid let's open the ceiling grid now okay so again it's not only the fixtures but also the ceiling grid okay because you can see uh, the down light is now placed in the side of the ceiling grid so it should be in the middle at least or not so close to the edge because there's a steel framing there so it i'm sure it they, they cannot install it like this so you can adjust like one fitting let's do it one fitting for every cubicle like this one and then control c and control v another on the other side and make sure it is fitting on the ceiling grid and this is another one in the lavatory or in the mirror side because when we look at the mirror usually we should have enough light in front of our face not on the back of our head or on the top of our head so we need to adjust this one this down light we need to adjust it like here so you might be thinking but it's not okay 
Now it's fitted. It's still fitted to the ceiling grid. You can see there's still enough space there. So that is much better compared if you put those luminaires on the top or at the back of the people looking at the mirror. And this one will be maybe here. Okay. All right. So you might think, oh, why, why it's not aligned to each other? It should be in, in one alignment of the grid. Okay. Nobody will check it in the ceiling. Okay. What is important is the people look at their face and they have enough light. Nobody will check that, oh, it's not on the same grid or it's not aligned. So don't worry about that. In actual situation, they don't care. As long as they have enough light on the toilet, in the common area, and also on the face when they look at the mirror. Okay, so that is the one. Another thing is on the cafeteria or in the coffee shop. For example, this one. So I just click my wand, uh, my magic wand or automatic arrangement here. And then this is the arrangement, the dialogues are suggested. So in actuality, say for example, the architect said this is the arrangement of the table for this coffee shop or dining area. So you should have enough light on the table. And of course, look at this one. It should be, uh, the downline should be on the grid, not like this one. Okay. So for example, you have this arrangement. So this is say five by four. Why don't you make it like four by five? Yes, I think this is much better compared to the previous one. And then you will place those down lights either in the middle of the grid or close to the edge of the grid as long as it's not on the line of the frame or on the grid. Okay, so it will be look like this. So now, after we consider the ceiling, let's consider now the table or the furniture. Because when you do uh, eat on the table, you want to have enough light on your table, not on the floor. Because the most important uh, lighting design considerations in a dining area should be on the table, not on the floor. Okay, so if you think that this one is enough because you already have down lights here and there, so I think it will have enough light on the table for this one. But if in this case, I don't think there will be enough light on the table because all the down lights are on the back of the chair. So we need to move it a little up or adjust the down light like this. Okay, so click on the grid and adjust it like this. Okay, and you may say, oh my God, how about this one? Now it will suffer. So, okay. So if this is the case, in the actuality, either the coffee shop owner will adjust the table on the, on the top of the light or they will choose a down light that has a gimbal or it's adjustable so they can aim it to the table. Okay, so there are some options like that. Because if it's an open area, like this wide area, it is very common or very obvious now to see those down lights scattering all over the ceiling and it's not good. Okay? This time it's not good because it's a wide area. Compared to the toilet, it's, it's not that big area. Okay. So if that is the case, they can just select a down light that is adjustable or they move the, the tables close to the down lights. Okay? Yes, so that is the things that are the common mistakes for a lighting designers when they do the lighting designs. So again, let's review. One is not considering the ceiling grid. Okay, the ceiling grid. So we should put our luminaires on the grid, not just by placing it in the middle. Okay, and then the next one is the furnitures or the fixtures. Because sometimes it's important to light up those tables, say for example, or lavatory or other spaces. Like for example, in archive room, don't put those uh, 60 by 60 or down lights or any luminaire on top of the cabinets. Make sure it's in the hallway of the cabinets. Okay, so that's it. And I hope you learned something today. And yeah, let's continue the top... Uh, five and six, maybe tomorrow or on the other day. All right, so see you again on the next video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and enroll in my Udemy courses. Yes, and of course, if you want to read some of my books, go and check Nelka Rocco 
at amazon.com don't forget nelkaroko at amazon.com okay so there you go and yes let's continue this one again see you on the next video bye